This lesson is on proportionality and power functions. The reason we're even talking about these functions is that they're uh, yet another entry in the dictionary of different kinds of functions that we're thinking about as potential mathematical models. Two quantities, x and y, are proportional if one is a constant times the other for some fixed constant, right? y equals kx means y is proportional to x. Uh, what a power function is, is if we have an equation like this, where y is proportional to x to some power. So k and alpha here are both constants. k is the constant of proportionality, and alpha is the power, or the exponent, okay? Um, regular proportionality is just a power function where the power alpha is equal to 1. So here are two simple examples. Gasoline is 279 a gallon. If you purchase g gallons, the cost c is 2.79 times g. So c is proportional to g with constant of proportionality 2.79. Here's an example of, of a power function. The area a of a circle is proportional to the square of its radius r. Right, so here's a, the area, here's r squared. And the constant of proportionality happens to be the number pi. To help you understand the significance of data obeying a power rule or a power function, I want to do a quick example that's called Stevens Law of Psychophysics. And please don't take the word law too seriously here. This is something from experimental psychology. And what's done is that a subject is given a stimulus. And this stimulus could pertain to uh, examples such as loudness, thermal pain, or electric shock. So they might be given a particular tone produced from computers and speakers. Or they might be exposed to a radiant heat source on the skin, or they might have some electric current run through their fingers. And the strength of that stimulus can be selected by the experimenter. And then there's a perceived intensity of the stimulus, I, which is what is sensed by the subject. So again, M is what the experimenter controls, I is what the subject feels. And I is uh, equal to a power law in M. It's K M to the alpha, and the exponent alpha is different for these different situations. I've given you a few examples in the table here. Loudness, thermal pain, and electric shock each have different values of that power. And to really drive home the significance of this, let's consider loudness with two different levels of stimulus, we'll call those levels of stimulus M1 and M2, where M2 is twice the original stimulus M1. So for M1, we plug into our power function, we can find the corresponding perceived intensity I1, it's Km1 to the 0.67. Then we can consider that second level of stimulus M2. So we plug M2 into our power rule, we remember that M2 here is actually 2M1, so we get uh, this factor, 2m1 to the 0.67, with a k in front of it. And when we expand all that, we get 1.6 km1 to the 0.67. And we recognize that uh, this part of this expression is the same as our original expression, m1. And thus we find out that the perceived intensity, i2, is 1.6 times the original perceived intensity. So let's say that again. We started out with a stimulus. We doubled the stimulus in strength, but what the subject perceived only went up by a factor of 1.6, not as much as the stimulus actually went up. In contrast, for electroshock, the exponent is 3.5. So here's the original perceived intensity, I1, and I2, we just have to plug in M2 equal to 2M1. And when we expand, we find this expression here where we recognize Km1 to the 3.5 is the same as the original perceived intensity. So in the end, here, we get out 11 times the original perception. That is, for electroshock, if you double the strength of the shock, the subject will perceive it to be 11 times stronger, much more than it actually increased. And this is, these are the kinds of behaviors that you get with power functions. Inverse proportionality just means proportional to the reciprocal of, and this is just a power function with a negative power, right? So if we say that the force of Earth's gravity on an object is inversely proportional to the square of the distance r between the object and the Earth's center, we write f is k divided by r squared, or we can use a negative exponent to write k times r to the negative 2. Similarly, the radius that a sphere must be in order to have a particular chosen mass is inversely proportional to the cube root of the density of the stuff it's made out of. 
So radius equals a constant divided by density to the one-third, which is the same as constant times density to the minus one-third. Here's one of my favorite examples of inverse proportionality. This is Zipf's law of linguistics. And again, don't interpret law too strictly here. Uh, what linguists can do is take a corpus of work, and that just means um, some collected body of work, maybe all of the newspapers and novels published between a particular set of dates. Um, and what they can do is count all of the words. They'll use software to do it, but they can count all of the words that appear in all of those articles and books, and they can count the frequency with which each word appears. So for instance, the word the appears almost 23 million times, and so the frequency is about 23 million, and that was the most common word, so its rank is 1. The second most common word, rank 2, turned out to be the word and, with a frequency of just over 11 million, and so on. And Zipf's law says basically that frequency is inversely proportional to the rank. Frequency equals a constant divided by rank. And this is approximately true uh, in English and many other languages as well. It's important for us to discuss how to tell if data obey a power function. There's a little bit of technical stuff here, but please bear with me because it's important. First, I want you to just notice that if we take a power function, we can transform it into something that looks like the equation of a line by taking natural log. So we start out with this power rule, take the natural log of each side, and we're gonna remember that the natural law of k times x to the alpha can be written as the natural log of k plus the natural log of x to the alpha, then we'll remember that alpha, the exponent, can be brought down in front of the natural log, and we get this expression, natural log k plus alpha natural log x. Now I just want to rename some things. Natural log y, we're going to call capital Y. I'm giving it a new name. Natural log x, I'm going to give a new name. I'm going to call it capital X. And natural log k, I'm going to give a new name. I'm going to call it b. And with that renaming, we find y equals b plus alpha x. You know this equation, it's the equation of a line. And what this says in short is if there is a, uh, a curve or data that obeys a power rule, if we take the natural log of y and the natural log of x and plot that, that what we'll see is a line where the slope of the line is alpha, the unknown power. By the way, the y-intercept of the line b will equal the natural log of k, the constant of proportionality. So let's sum this up in this technique box here. If you're given a bunch of data points and you want to test if they obey a power function, what you do is you form new data points where those new data points have just the natural log of the original values. So big X1, big Y1 is just natural log of little x1, comma, natural log of little y1. Then you plot these new data points. If the plot looks linear, then the original data obey a power function, and the power alpha is equal to the slope of the observed line, and the constant of proportionality is e to the b, uh, where b is the observed vertical intercept. This technique box is an example of the kind of thing you should never memorize. What you should do is you should understand this idea up here, and you know, in the span of one line, be able to write that down and remember how to figure out how to find out the slope and uh, rather how to find out the power and constant of proportionality from going through this process. And to make this extra concrete, we're going to do an example. So here's data for the most populous cities in the United States. New York is the most populous. It has rank one in that population list. And here's the population. Los Angeles is number two with just under four million and so on. So the first thing we might do is just hypothesize or ask, could this data obey a power law? Population equals a constant times the rank to some power. If we wanted to find out, what we would do is form a new data set. We would take these rank numbers and we would take the natural log of all of them. And that gives us this column in the table. Then we take the population and we take the natural log of all the population values. That gives us this column in the table. Then we plot this column and this column, right? So natural log r on the horizontal axis, natural log p on the vertical axis. And we see this set of black points here. And we say, well, they don't look perfectly like a line, um, but they look maybe approximately linear. And so using a computer, we can find the equation of the line that comes closest to passing through all those points. And it's this line here. 
and the slope turns out to be minus 0.82, and the y-intercept means 15.83. This means that in our original power law, the exponent alpha is minus 0.82, and the constant of proportionality is e to the y-intercept. That's e to the 15.83, which turns out to be this large number, 7.49 times 10 to the sixth. So then we would have an approximate power law that describes this original rank and population data. So let's wrap up. I want you to ask yourself if you can do the following things. Explain proportionality and power functions in words, equations, and graphs. You should be able to describe the significance of a function being a power function. And you should be able to determine if given data obeys a power function. And if it does, you should be able to model it. Thanks for listening.